I've showed you guys this trophy a few times before. This is the Red Bluff Outlaw Driver of the Year Award trophy, and I just real quick wanted to start off this video with showing it to you guys because we have to bring it back this Saturday. The 2020 awards banquet is coming up, and that means they're gonna be giving it to another driver, except this year's a little bit different. This trophy they're gonna turn into, I believe, the Open Intermediate Perpetual Trophy because they added that class this year. They need a trophy for it, and they are gonna make something new for the Driver of the Year Award. So it's pretty sad because ever since I started coming to a Red Bluff, this was the original trophy back in 2010, and even way before that. I mean, it goes back to a 1991 and 1992 right there. So a lot of history with this trophy for sure and all of the names on it. It's so such an honor to uh, be on this trophy. But anyway, we have to bring it back. So I thought I would start the video and welcome you guys with uh, just showing you this thing, Red Bluff Outlaw Driver of the Year. So last week on the YouTube channel, I sat down with Carly, my sister, and we just talked about racing. She talked about how she was gonna have her first open start in the open intermediate division at Red Bluff. We asked her a bunch of questions, and you guys seemed to really like that. So we're gonna continue with that type of video today. The only difference is the guest is gonna be my dad. So the guest today is gonna be my dad. We're gonna ask him some questions, just like we did with my sister, ask him his background on racing. If a lot of you guys don't know, I am a first generation driver. I did not come from a racing family or a racing background. So this will be interesting for you guys to kind of hear about how my dad uh, learned about racing, some of his experiences at the track, and overall, we're just gonna get to know him a little bit more. So like in our interview last week, we have a seat here open next to us, and the guest, my dad, can come in. I didn't want to be rude, so I brought you something to drink for the Almost. video. So we just talked about you did not come from a racing background, and a lot of things kind of had to happen for us to end up where we are today, but talk about maybe what sparked interest. I know NASCAR, you kind of went to a NASCAR race, you have some buddies that were interested in racing, but you specifically had never um, really went to the races. Yeah, we used to go to NASCAR races and hang out and go to Sonoma, We'd go to Vegas, a bunch of the guys, and we did that. We'd go to our lo local racetrack here, um, the Southern Oregon Speedway, hang out, watch the races. Never thought we would be ever involved in a racing thing. And then, uh, you know, one day had kids and <laughs> had Tanner, Carly, and Carissa, beautiful daughters. And one day there was a go-kart on the corner in our town, and I drove by and I looked at it. And I thought, you know, this might be fun and might be interesting. And so we uh, embarked on the journey of Tara and I going down, buying this cart. And one of the buddies that worked for me at the time helped me get it set up, went to our local racetrack and started racing go-karts when Tanner was four and a half. And it's just evolved from there. Pretty much, pretty much. I think that's about as accurate as it gets. You know, we started with the go-kart and um, all of a sudden now we here, are here today, uh, 10, 11 years later. But it just started with a little interest in NASCAR and some of the local races. So now I have a few more questions for my dad that you guys sent in and maybe you wanted to know about him. So we have a short story about this next question and that is gonna be the first time my dad was ever in a race car because he didn't grow up racing a go-kart or a sprint car or anything like that. But about eight years ago, you got the opportunity to run a buddy's car because he'd never got to experience it and just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, they were having a local play day at Southern Oregon Speedway. And so I went out there to watch the cars going around and I was hanging out in the pits and, and one of my buddies, Rick, said, hey, hey, hop in my car, hop in my daughter's car. Which, which it was like called a Super it Four. It was a Super Four. Which I don't even so know what that necessarily is it nowadays. It was a four-cylinder... Who knows? It was a four cylinder, but anyway, it was called the Super Four. And he said, it was toward the end of the session, the track was dry, marbles, no water, and uh, um, it was pretty interesting. I went out and did about four laps, went through the infield, uh, tore the front bumper off <laughs> and, the, and the pan underneath the motor. Um, I thought I was doing like 100 miles an hour. I wish we had a video of it, and uh, I was actually probably barely going, but it felt a lot faster than it was. That was my only experience in a, in a car. and Still to and this it, day. Yeah, I think. Uh, so I think um, maybe soon we want to get him in the outlaw cart, maybe get him in the U2 rental or one of ours or something, 
But um, that would be fun to kind of, you know, see that experience because only a few laps in a car. So we got started, like we talked about, around 2008, 2009 is when we got started in outlaw kart racing and it just evolved from there. But I think one of the toughest things, my dad with kind of his background in his profession, uh, you were a mechanical type guy but still learning to set up a race car is tough. So the biggest question is how did you learn to set up the race cars? I know you had some friends, but it's really tough when you know we got yeah. into the sport. Um, when we first got into the sport, I had people that I knew that helped me think they knew how to set up a race car. And, and then um, we raced at our local track. It was quite the experience learning how to do it. And then we moved to racing at Red Bluff, California, where you go from five or six, seven cars at your local track racing against 30 or 40 of the best cars uh, on the West Coast. And so I had to step my game up. I'm book smart because that's all I ever read. I, I, I ordered books online, how to set go-karts up. And uh, one of my buddies down there at Red Bluff, Chris Rodman, um, he said, get this book and get this book. And so I actually, I still have them today. So if anybody is doing go-karts, uh, they're just the basic go-karts, how to set up a chassis. And I'll tell you what, we live by this today. And then, uh, this was another interesting book, Dynamics of Speed. Very interesting, centers of gravity, everything. It's very interesting on how the basics work really well for setting up a race car. And that's how we set up go-karts and that. I, I, I don't have much experience with a sprint car. That's the one that I'm reading now. <laughs> yeah, so. so I think, you know, that's a big tip. Book smart. Read, I've never raced before. do research, figure out, ask a lot of questions. I think that's kind of where, you know, especially as we get into the sprint car, it's a whole new thing. You know, we go from running a 450 pound outlaw cart with the driver in it, with no shocks, no suspension, to now um, a sprint car, obviously, with shock, suspension, a super big wing on top. So there's a big learning curve that we're experiencing right now on how to figure out what the car is doing and how to set it up. Now, this question we get asked a lot just in the comment section in general, but for you as a parent of Carly and I, how is it when we race together or just us being on the track in general? What are your kind of emotions? Um, <laughs> Mom's always rooting for one of you and I'm rooting for the other one and and it's great to see the battle uh between you two when you guys race rarely rarely yeah but it, it's it's, it's, it's get, getting it's, getting getting to the point yeah it's getting to the point where it'll be an ongoing battle here real soon where they both race together same night same class everything Carly will be getting in a sprint car at the end of uh August for some test laps that'll be fun that'll be awesome for the channel and uh and and mom has no fingernails, so <laughs> she sits there and chews them out. We are your biggest fans, so it's it's great to watch you guys excel and and we support you guys 100%. So the next question we got here, so a lot of memories happen in racing and we've been doing this a while, but is there a favorite memory for Carly and I that just stands out immediately to you? You know, I think they're, one of the biggest ones I think of is when you guys both won at Red Bluff on the same night you guys both won the A-Main. It was the Autism Awareness Night, night at Red Bluff. And uh, Carly won it in the beginner box. You won it in the box. Yeah. And uh, We got some and, like really cool puzzle piece trophies. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was one of the first races you guys won together. And you guys both won, and that was a special night. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that was back around 2012, 2013. So it was a while back, but I actually have a picture for it on the screen. Uh, a while back, but that just shows how little Carly and I were and how now we're progressing to uh, both racing in the top tier class at Red Bluff. So I asked Carly this question last week and I'd be interested to know your answer here. Uh, what is your favorite racetrack that we get to go to? That's tough because I like them all, but I think Red Bluff is probably number one for indoor track just because the competition there on any given night, anybody can win and it brings the best racers in the country. So outdoor tracks, you know, I like Cottage Grove. Um, I like Banks. Banks little, is really little, fun. Little Bull Ring. 
and 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 we're getting ready to race some California tracks. So uh, who yeah. knows? We're gonna but. we're gonna be exploring a lot of different tracks this year as we kind of move up. You know, last year we stayed a lot in Oregon and Washington, but now it's time to definitely kind of expand. I know Chico's on the schedule a lot, and we will be releasing that schedule more soon. So that's really all I got for the questions today. There's only one last one. I think a lot of the viewers are gonna want to know after we did the the engine change video, and you were drinking a beer. What's your favorite beer to have after the last checkered flag? Like, if you could pick any of them. Anything cold. Anything cold. Anything cold, anything free. Yeah, anything cold. Whatever's in the next uh, person's next to us ice chest. But no, anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys want to see more videos with my dad, he'll be in them all summer and um, a lot more of the family. Carly, Krissa, my mom, Tara, you'll see her um, nervous in the stands. Hey, we need to make this video more views than Carly. Make sure. I want to feel more important. You want to feel more important. So uh, we'll see you guys all in the next video. Thank you for tuning into this uh, Q&A here in the shop. We'll see you guys in the Sprint car in 2020. Deuces.